Hello, my name is Michael Cohen and this is a very short presentation that I've prepared on the question as to what was the original gospel. Uh, Christians know this gospel as or refer to it often as the Q book or book Q or the Q gospel. Well, this video is going to reveal the actual identity of the original Hebrew or Aramaic gospel. And in order to do that, first I need to go back to around the year 800 AD, or maybe 700 AD, it doesn't really matter, uh, back to Europe, where you had populations of Jews living in areas that would now be France, and obviously Italy, and Spain. And back then, as I've sort of discussed in other videos, the European Jews didn't have the Talmud, and uh, their Judaism was a much, much looser affair. And uh, their attitudes on Jesus were not the same as, say, attitudes of Jews, maybe not in 2016, but in, say, 1916. And uh, the group was, was basically divided on its opinions on, uh, you know, the, who was Jesus, whether he was the Messiah, and so forth. And let me repeat again, they didn't have the Talmud. Judaism hadn't sort of crystallized into this sort of religion that is definitely not Christianity. It was a far looser thing. And the, the lines at that time between Jews and Christians um, were far more blurred. And the official line back then that most Jews would, would say is, uh, you know, we believe Jesus the Messiah, but we don't believe he was, he was God uh, or the Son of God. Or maybe some Jews believed he was the Son of God, but none believed he was God. And that was seen as the real distinction between Jews and Christians in the 7th or 8th century. Um, but it was all rather vague. Uh, now, back then, like I say, the Jews themselves, between themselves, were divided on their opinions on Jesus. And you, you basically had three groups. You had Jews that didn't believe he was anything whatsoever and, in fact, mocked him. So they were pretty much equivalent to modern day, or maybe not modern day Jews, because attitudes towards Jesus have changed recently with Jews, mostly. But they were equivalent to traditional Jews. Yet another group that was in the middle that believed that Jesus was some sort of secondary Messiah. And these Jews uh, believed that Jesus lived in a cave uh, below the Vatican. And for some reason they believed, and I don't really know why, that if you walked past him, he'd throw you an emerald. They also believed that he uh, you know, uh, wore rags and his cave had a bad stench. And if you walked uh, above it, um, you would smell this stench. But they did believe he was a messiah. But this whole idea that he lived in rags and he smelled was this idea that there was this secondary suffering messiah. And, and what would happen is when the, 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 the main messiah would come, Jesus would for the first time ever leave this cave and join this Messiah, um, change his rags into princely garments and, and, and go to Jerusalem. So they, they kind of believe Jesus with this, like I say, uh, second, secondary or um, penultimate Messiah. Now, then you had a group, and they'd probably be referred to as Hebrew Christians, who actually did believe Jesus was the Messiah, but they didn't believe Jesus was God. Now, now these, these Jewish Christians or Hebrew Christians, um, they were nothing like, what they believed in was, was nothing like what Christians in the Bible Belt believe about Jesus. Modern day Protestants and things like that. Um, and what they, they were basically uh, liberal Jews. They were sort of ancient liberal Jews. And their, their Jesus was this kind of anti-clerical, anti-religious, liberal, friend of the poor, who had come to, um, to, to nullify the, the intolerant and, and, and cruel laws of Moses. And Jesus was this kind of hippie, basically, and that's who they venerated. So they were kind of ancient liberal Jews, and in a sense, that stream of, of Jews has always kind of existed. And, and exists obviously to, to this day. So they, they saw, like I say, Jesus as a kind of a hippie. He was anti the rabbis, anti, uh, he was actually anti Moses. And, um, you know, he was uh, a liberal. 
And you have these three groups, and they kind of, um, you know, didn't, uh, you know, they, they, they got along, but they, they disagreed. And at that time, like I say, there's very little in writing about the Jews in Europe. This is a, a mysterious period of time, and this is one of the reasons. And, and then around the, the 10th or 11th century, the group adopted the Talmud, and I'm going to get into that, why they adopted the Talmud. And then they, all three, it was basically, there was an ultimatum, you're, you're with us or against us. If you believe in Jesus or any, in any shape, manner or form, you're out of the group and you can become a Christian and assimilate. And Jews don't believe in Jesus and, in fact, don't like him and stuff like that. Right, so that, 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 that happened around the... Uh, starting with the 11th century, but in particular around the time of the Crusades. And it was a response to what, what the Jews saw as a betrayal by, by Christians when they attacked Jewish communities in the Rhineland and murdered Jews. And that was kind of the cut. And that's, that's when modern Talmudic, modern in inverted commas, Talmudic Judaism began. Now, these Jews who, um, who looked to Jesus as the Messiah, they had a book. They had an ancient Aramaic book about Jesus, and that was their gospel. And, and I will tell you now that uh, that is the original gospel. And the name of this book was called Sefer Taliyat Yeshua, the book of the hanging or the crucifixion of Jesus. And in this book, like I say, Jesus is kind of portrayed as this kind of bleeding heart liberal. Uh, who went against the rabbis, you know, claimed that they were basically heaping a lot of elitist uh, kind of uh, garbage on people, which I tend to agree with. Like, I'm sympathetic myself to, to the ideas of this book. Uh, that, that status oriented stuff, um, you know, uh, ostracizing people based on who their birth, if they, they weren't born into the right type of Jewish family. And one of the things about Jesus, according to this book, and I've got to make this very clear, according to the book, say for Talia to Shua, Jesus was born a bastard. And, and the Jews who believed, and this is what I've got to stress, and in many ways, people that go on about conspiracies about the Don May, if you've ever heard of them, or, or the uh, Frankist Jews and the Illuminati, in many ways, they're actually coming where these Jews left off. Because right? they actually believe their Messiah was a, a bastard, uh, born from an uh, illegitimate birth. And that his mother mother um, was a woman by the name of Stutter or Miriam, whichever, and she was um, she was uh, engaged to a man by the name of uh, Yehuda Paphos or Judah Paphos, and she had relations with a gentleman by the name of Pantera or Pandera, and. Um, she had a son, and Jesus' real name, by the way, in Greek was Soteros, right? Um, his real name was Soteros. She had a son with um, uh, this uh, Joseph Pandera, right, and um, who was from Lebanon. And tech, I mean, Jews will claim that Jesus' father, Pandera, was uh, a Gentile, but he was not. He was a Hebrew. He was a, an assimilated Romanized Hebrew. He was not a Gentile. And, uh, and that actually does make Jesus, according to Jewish law, a bastard. It's been said that he wasn't a bastard because his father was a non-Jew, but actually his father was Jew. Uh, Pandera was a, was a Jew who, had, who sort of left Judaism. Uh, Joseph, I think Tiberius Pandera was his middle name. And um, I might add that the whole carpenter, Joseph the carpenter, uh, Pandera is a Aramaic cognate of the word Carpentarius. Now I realise that in Greek, um, Joseph is referred to as Technos, but it's just one of those funny things that when they translated uh, Technos into English, it became Carpenter. And it's just one of those things because the words had similar meanings. And I won't go into this, that actually he really was Joseph Carpentarius or Pandera, which is an a a Aramaic Aramaic cognate of the word Carpentarius, and it referred to his profession, which it clearly states was he made chariots for the... He was a wealthy man who made chariots for the Roman army, and he was a dandy, and he seduced uh, Jesus' uh, mother, Miriam Studder, who was, I might add, from one of uh, 
Judah's wealthiest families and of Hasmonean descent and not really poor. So, so they had this son and he was kind of mocked by the rabbis um, as a bastard. And in my view, the highlight of the book, uh, Safer to Lead it, sure, is, um, is the verse where um, the rabbis say, start mocking him, you're a bastard, Jesus. And he says, it's you rabbis who are a bastard. I'm born from my mother's mind. Now, that seems on the surface to mean, well, it's, it seems mocking that they're mocking the fact that um, Miriam made up um, the fact that she uh, had a child through God to cover the fact that she'd been unfaithful. And they're mocking that by, you know, that she made that story up. He's born from his mother's mind. But what they're really, what he's really saying is that he's mocking their tradition of, of, um, of forcing their daughters to marry people that they decide, like matchmaking their daughters. And he's saying, hey, my mother chose who, who she was a free woman. I mean, this is very liberal. So she was basically her own, her own agent and, and, and she made a decision who, 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 who to have a child with, even though her parents had betrothed her to someone else, which is Yehuda Paphos. And the whole Joseph, the carpet, so they've mixed, what the Christians is they mix the two characters and, and Yehuda Paphos and Joseph, the carpenter became one as Joseph. It really is two figures. And what they're saying is that she was, he was saying she was betrothed and she didn't listen to her parents like a modern woman. And she, she decided she made her own choice who, um, who uh, she was going to have a child. And it's kind of a bit eugenic because it's also sort of reflecting the idea that, well, she did this, she broke tradition. She, she decided who she was going to have a child with and he became the most famous guy in the world, which kind of suggests there's a bit of an evolutionary message there, but we won't go into that. But anyway, they had this book and then I'm going to cut a long story short and it's a very long story. Um, and then what happened was um, the, the Christians started attacking the Jews, um, all of them, the Christian ones, the non-Christian ones, around the time of the Crusades. And it was decided that's it, we break, we, we're going to sort of create this Talmudic Judaism, we're going to separate ourselves from the Christians altogether. And they took this book, say for Talias Yeshua, they renamed it a Tol Dot Yeshu. And they added, and they basically were getting rid of the book. There's no more Sefer Talias Yeshua. But we, we're going to keep it you know, as a record, but we're going to alter it. We're going to alter it and make it a negative book. And they just added a few little passages here and there. Now, they added the, there was this thing with the Jews who didn't like Jesus, that they believed that, that um, Paul was a double agent who wanted to get the whole Jesus cult out of um, the Jew, and this might actually have been true, out of the Jewish people. And he was, he was called on by the rabbis, we want, this Jesus guy is destroying Judaism with this liberalism, we need to do something about it. We need to, to get this cult away from the Jews. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna make it a religion for the Gentiles. Right, and, and they added that story. That was their story all along. They added that to say for Talia's Yeshua and they added a few other little bits and pieces to make the book negative. I mean, there's a lot more I could say about this. Now, the thing about Jesus' liberalism, it's a bit complex because I've, I've mentioned this in other videos that you had this Sabian religion and which might be referred to as, as pre-Christian Gnosticism and that was a religion before Abraham and, and then I'm going to cut a long story short. Um, the Hebrews obviously went to Canaan and they established this religion of Abraham, which is a kind of a, an outgrowth and got most of its ideas like Adam and Eve. Jews didn't make that up. That, that's from the Sabians. Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, all these people are from the Sabians. And um, they, they took this religion, they created a sort of protest monotheistic thing called that, that eventually became Judaism. But not all Hebrews... Nevertheless, in Palestine were Jews. Many of them had reverted or they'd adopted, they'd reverted back to the old Sabian religion, Gnostic religion. Others had, had become Hebrews culturally. They might have been Canaanites because the Palestinian Hebrews are a fusion of those Babylonian Hebrews who I mentioned in another video and, and Canaanites. And some of them, these Canaanites became Hebrews culturally but never adopted the Jewish religion. 
And, and the Mandians are a group of people who are basically Canaanites of the old Gnostic faith. The modern day Mandians, you've probably never heard of them. They're the last sort of Gnostics. And that was a religion that existed amongst the Hebrews. Not every Hebrew was a Jew or even uh, you know, a worshipper of the Torah or Abraham. Many were Gnostics who had either rejected and reverted back to the Sabian faith or had never really been Jews. And part of Jesus' thing was he was rejecting Judaism and becoming part of this Sabian group. And, and um, John the Baptist, the Baptist, Sabian, Mandian, uh, Kuthian, they're all the same word for, for Notsri, Nazarene. They're all one word. Uh, Nazarene, and that's the name of the original Jewish Christians, by the way, not Ebionites, they were Nazarenes. Naz Notsri, Sabian, Mandian, Kuthian, Gnostic, Baptist, they're all the same word. And I mean, these people that believed in this Sabian religion that was all over the Aramaic speaking world and was the pre runner to Judaism. And the whole thing was that Jesus was kind of, apart from being a liberal, he was moving back to that religion. And um, yeah, and that was his whole relationship with John the Baptist. He was he was a a non Jewish Hebrew, a a, a a could have been a Mandian or a or a Sabian, but he was some sort of Gnostic. And it's basically the Kabbalah, what Jews refer to as the Kabbalah, and and that then returned in the sixteenth or fifteenth century. The Jews kind of returned to that, and some people regard that as heretical because that's precisely they would argue that the Kabbalah is precisely that Babylonian Sabian religion that Judaism was rejecting. So the Jews basically uh, changed around this book, Sefer Talias Yeshua. They, they refer to it then as Toldot Yeshu. And um, there was a gentleman in the 19th century who kind of suspected this. His name was Hugh Sconfeld. Sorry, he was in the 20th century. Kind of suspected this. But the thing he never knew that, 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 that really puts the, proves this whole thing to be correct he never knew how the Talmud was all changed around to reflect the new Jewish consciousness in the 11th century. And he suspected that Toldot Yeshu was based on the original gospel, but he never understood it was the original gospel because he, the one thing he wasn't aware of was this process in the Rhineland when the Ashkenazim were creating what we call Judaism, where they were playing around with a whole lot of books to reflect this new Jewish religion. And one of the ones but due to the books that got, got the cut was to say for Talias Yeshua, just a book about a, a, an old Jewish prophet, Jesus, became this book told on Yeshu, a book about uh, uh, Jesus, the bad guy. He never understood that process where after they felt heavily betrayed by the Christians and the bishops, when they were pogroms in the Crusades, they, they just said, there's no more tolerance of Jesus and we're going to, change this book into a negative book and they did that throughout the entire Talmud. The funny thing is that they still nevertheless published these secret books which are known as books of omission and nobody knows about them. They're not in English. You can't find them on the net. Well you can if you know where to look. Um, well they still have all this stuff in there and if you go through them in detail you'll basically discover a lot of this and uh, you'll also discover the Talmud contrary to what people think talks about Jesus extensively and, um, and the Jews pulled all that stuff out of the Talmud um, uh, when, when they decided that, that when they were creating this new Judaism. And, and you'll hear this said that, you know, uh, uh, copies of the Talmud from Morocco um, and things like that have these, the, the, the few uh, references to Jesus in them, but that's not really true. There were loads more references. There were thick. So to uh, wrap it all up, in a nutshell, this, uh, this secret Aramaic gospel that was originally referred to as Sefer Taliyat or Taliyas Yeshua uh, was originally written by uh, Jesus' very first followers shortly after his death uh, in, in Palestine. It was written in Aramaic. It was then uh, handed down to, uh, over, the, over the centuries, to, uh, between, you know, within uh, communities of Jews who regarded it as uh, the work of a uh, prophet or, or, you know, a holy person. And it is the actual book that the uh, Synoptic Gospels, in particular Matthew, uh, is based on. And it's, it's fairly obvious 
uh, Matthew and the Synoptic Gospels are based on this original Nazarene uh, Gospel, Sefer Talia to Yeshua. Uh, after the Nazarenes came a group called the Ebionites. Uh, don't confuse them with the Nazarenes. They were the very first uh, Christians, Jewish Christians, and they wrote this book, and that book is the Q As book. I said, it was handed down, and eventually, uh, when uh, you know, it was decided that Judaism would completely split in an emphatic manner from, from Christianity, uh, the rabbi said, you know, this book's out, but they allowed a version of it to remain uh, as a record, but it was altered into a negative That's book. That's basically the story of the Q Gospel and uh, Yeshua, Jesus. I also want to say that uh, these days you have ideas being pushed by people like Shmuley Patea and Reza Aslan, who are claiming that Jesus was either an Orthodox Jew or a patriotic Hebrew zealot. I'd like to say that's just complete. Both of those ideas are complete nonsense. Jesus uh, was not an Orthodox Jew. He actually didn't like Moses and his laws and was quite hostile to them. And um, to say he was an Orthodox Jew is preposterous. Secondly, to say he was a Hebrew a patriotic zealot is there's no basis for that at all. He, he didn't have any opinion about the Romans um, whatsoever. He wasn't he, his, his whole thing was not independence from Rome. He was not a Hebrew patriot. He was a liberal and he was a bit of an internationalist and he rejected the whole chosen people idea. And, and those ideas are garbage. But nevertheless, I do want to say that, uh, you know, there's no reason whatsoever. This idea that Jews don't like Jesus is absolutely ridiculous. Jesus was a Jew and a Hebrew. And in my opinion, his ideas were better than the, the rab much better and the rabbis who were opposing him, or the priests for that matter. And, um, you know, he was, he was you know, as Jewish as anyone. His ideas were as Jewish as anyone. There's no reason whatsoever for Jews to have any, any negative attitude towards him. And truly, um, any divisions that exist between Christians and Jews, and I mean, I realise the two religions get along pretty well these days, but I mean, with this in mind, I, I think that all divisions between the two groups need to, 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 to basically evaporate and they should both understand that these divisions in the first place were an unfortunate um, result of, uh, like I say, the Crusades and a series of misunderstandings and, uh, and uh, bad things that happened to the Jews. And I, I think that, you know, now is the time for these religions to basically uh, unite and, and, and divisions between them to evaporate because there really are none. And there's no reason for uh, Jews to have any negative opinions on Jesus at all. And uh, thanks for listening.